great enough. We'll be, with Fabrique, we'll be speaking to us about uh, the balance between uh, branding and conversion in e-commerce. Thank you very much. And thank you, panelists, for uh, a great conversation. And hope to speak to each of you individually later. <laughs> Get your clicker. Uh, my specialty within e-commerce is to do fashion e-commerce. So this is the part that you have to use your brain. This story will be about fashion e-commerce. And I was asked to present here because uh, the organizers thought that you should use your brain in trying to relate to everything that's happening over there and see how it would fit to your business. Do we have any of that? Okay, let's go. Um, and one of the biggest challenges in e-commerce is that um, uh, branding and conversion seem to be clashing because the brand is about creating a difference and conversion seems to be about doing everything the same as everyone else. And to break this to you, I really think that they do go hand in hand. And the next couple of minutes, I'm going to try and explain why I think that that is. Um, let's get it into that later. And explaining that, I uh, also use a little clip, and now I hope that the audio will work, because I use this analogy with birds of paradise, which is exactly what all of us are doing in this industry trying to create a difference in order to survive. A male bluebird of paradise is advertising for a mate. It's quite a performance, but he's not the only bird of paradise here keen to make an impression. There are nearly 40 different kinds on the island of New Guinea, each with a display seemingly more bizarre than the rest. The male has a good set of lungs, but he'll have to do more than flutter his eyelids if he wants to impress her. It'll all depend on his performance. That's us, right? That bird gets up. The females may be dull looking, and but they're customer. very picky. And it's time for a really close inspection. His right side looks fine, but what about his left? Pretty impressive, but is he magnificent enough? Oh dear, her departure says it all. So Generations right? of choosy females have driven the evolution of these remarkable displays. The more extravagant a male is, the more likely he'll be noticed. trying to make that difference, trying to stand out, trying to have the most beautiful colors, trying to create the best thinkable user experience. Um, but these birds do a neat trick. They all know that they have feet. They all know that they need a beak to eat. They all know that they need wings, but still they create a difference. Um, so in, in e-commerce, increasingly patterns seem to be the enemy of creativity, right? And of innovation. And if you look back, uh, I know uh, many of you will know ASOS. Uh, in 2009, their homepage looked like this. It's a bold statement. Today, it's a really tidy white website. If you look at Paul Smith, five years ago, it looked like this. It's something special. Today, it's a really tidy white website. If you look at um, uh, Land's End Swimwear, they had this fantastic island in which you could browse the, uh, the collection really up front. And today, you're guessing, it's this white website again. Um, and why? Well, because we measure stuff, right? Big data has been mentioned. Um, and we can finally measure the rude and impatient behavior of all of our customers. Finally. And um, I don't know if these are the ball.com figures that were mentioned. But yet, a one-second delay in page response is a 7% cut in conversions, an 11% decline in page views, and a 16% deduction in customer satisfaction. Just that one second. Isn't that impressive? 
So conversion is king in my world, and I guess it should be in yours because we all are in there for the transaction. So about conversion, we have to realize that conversion in the end is also branding, right? Someone was happy, someone made a buy, um, but consider this. You know how we all complain the cars look more and more the same? Um, who knows what type of car this is? A Prius, yes. In a second, I will explain to you why you saw that. Um, this is um, uh, another reason why conversion works. Because you, you may have never driven a Peugeot, you do know how to drive this car. Right? Because that's all the controls are in the right place. So you have to know for your industry, what are the controls that you cannot mess with? And what are the controls that you can't change? Um, so conversion is also convention. And convention, yes, is boring. And you don't want to be boring, you want to make a difference. So here's the car. It's not just the forces of nature or legislation that force all cars to be the same. Um, um, it's also convention, but there is room for a, a difference. And who said the Prius? Who was that? Okay, how did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> You're right, but that goes for more cars. Anyone else? audience that doesn't come up with the real life. Tail light. That's, um, uh, that's the area where the designers of the Prius thought, thought they found the room to create that difference. So what goes for the birds also goes for cars. They have to find the spots that they have to be the same. They have to find the spots that they can differ. And that's the same puzzle for e-commerce. And I'm sure that that's the same puzzle that you face every day. What do I have to stick to? What will make my money? And where can I make the difference? Think about it. Use your brain. So branding is creating a difference. Brands are the guidance, that have a role of guidance in creating that difference. You just cannot be just different. You have to stick to the core of what you are. And that core <coughs> is often defined um, uh, in terms of personality brand personality, um, and I don't know if you, you if, 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 if you know that this is a tool, a, a very practical way of explaining how brands uh, express themselves in the world, and it's through uh, three factors. One is communication. How does the brand speak to you? What words does it use? What messages are there? Second is how does the brand behave? What are you actually putting out there? And third, what's the appearance of the brand? symbols do you use? What's your logo? And in fashion e-commerce, if you're talking about personality, there's a lot of people to choose from as people, people, brands, and one of my favorites is Karl Lagerfeld. <laughs> I'm ready. Yes, yes. There you are, finally. We should have come together, then we would have been on time. You know, I'm always late because I'm patient with the people before and I'm patient with the people after. Thank you. I want to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. I have the vision of me in front of me, but I would like you to describe you and I will tell you if you are really that way. Three words will be enough. Myself, in three words, I, no, I, I need a, a little more than three words for that. That's not that simple. Huh? What could I say? You know, I don't deliver a description of my person. You have what you see, that's all. There's nothing behind. Are you easily bored, and especially now? What a strange question. Ça va? I think it's fascinating how he refuses to describe himself in three words, right? He is me. But we as Mark Spears, we don't have that luxury. We have to find these words and to be able to communicate to others what's the core essence of your brand. And if you think about it, you might describe Carl as being original yet sentimental. 
and cool yet imaginative and intelligent yet charming. So there's all this tension in this brand and it's really, really fun to find that out, for instance, with models like the one that uh, uh, Acker did in 97. I really think about how can I describe the core of my brand. So really, personality inspires. Um, but at the same time, if you look at this model, with the point that I made earlier, there's so much in e-commerce that you really have to comply to, <coughs> like pricing, promotions, conditions, return uh, uh, things, UI patterns, grid pages, so boring, boring, boring. Okay, but there is a world out there. There is something that you can do beyond that. And for that, I would like to go uh, 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 to here with you through these different um, segments of brand uh, uh, convey conveyance and brand personality and the expression thereof. So first, storytelling. If you have a meaningful brand that changes people's lives, there probably is a story to tell. If you look at Rafa, a Dutch um, uh, 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 startup um, that sells sporting clothes, there is a story with each of these garments. There are adventures to be told. Um, you just, you don't just tell about the material side and the price. And also Nike is very, very big in storytelling uh, and tying itself to, uh, to famous sporting people. And obviously when you read about these stories or view them, the store is never far away. So storytelling and the actual store are very close to each other. And another way of telling stories or really uh, communicating is through a persuasive design and persuasive communication. Uh, and if you look at Shoe Guru, what they do actually in their store is putting up sold cars. Some of them are pretty cheap, and that adds to the sense of scarcity. Uh, you really want to have those shoes. You have to be careful, though, because if you put up too much, you will uh, get the feeling that all the best ones have gone. Right? But it's striking that balance. And that's about persuasive design. And if you want to be in communications and be really persuasive about it, this is a get mental notes type deck from Stephen Anderson that helps us every day when coming up with psychological hooks that we can use in our design and communications practice to really make better converting design. Um, and they're kind of abstract, so you can use them for, for, for most uh, marketing activities. So that's communication. Moving on, um, behavior. Well, only dead fish go with the flow, right? If you want to innovate, if you want to be meaningful, you have to put some effort into it. And together with a large Dutch retailer, we came up with these five areas in which retailers can really make a difference. And I'm going uh, through them one by one real quick. First, commerce. What are you selling? This defines obviously the biggest part of what you do, but it has to be, uh, you don't have to comply to everyone else. Amazon didn't comply by providing, well, endless amounts of uh, freebies uh, uh, online, and it determines the way that they look online, right? Vacant and Gold kind of going the same way and looking alike online. But if you're looking at great brands, they have a very limited uh, collection of freebies, and this actually illustrates it better. So determining to sell something differently or, or uh, displaying it differently will have an effect on your communication. Next up, advice. You can choose to base your brand on delivering advice. And there's some very tantalizing concepts out there. For one, there's this daily dress me website and you that you can look up your, your hometown and you get uh, dressing advice for the day. And this is actually limited for every 31 who would ship those clothes same day also. Um, so it's just that at the core. And also there are increasingly uh, fitting rooms uh, and startups in that area that really help you give the advice of uh, providing clothing to fitting for a change. Um, third, relationship. Um, branded is a new uh, UK based, I don't know, take this, this, this um, um, uh, onboarding process uh, and then there's no shop 
And there's a surprise at first. Hey, where's the stuff? But it's not there. There's just a, a step enter. And you can ask someone what you would want to have. And it comes in and she can come back to you with uh, suggestions. And maybe he or she says, oh, I don't know, I have to look it up for you. And you walk in and you see and you open your phone and it does it and says, hey, I got something for you. Right? And these personal shopping experience are booming right now. I didn't expect it. A couple of years ago, I was betting on big data um, um, and, and, and user profiling and personalization. But what you actually see growing the fastest right now in fashion is personal shopping, people doing that work. Um, I don't know if you heard of the Cloakroom. It's an Amsterdam-based um, startup. They're expanding right now over Europe. So personal shopping, personalized life is really, really growing um, uh, in fashion. And I don't see why it shouldn't anywhere else. Fourthly, every brand brings together people. You have to wonder which group of people am I bringing together and can I make something out of it? How, how, how can we... Um, <coughs> Free feet from that force of bringing these people together. And Threadless in fashion is the case uh, that, that acts as a standard. Because what they do is they sell out challenges, design challenges to their community. And ask them, okay, uh, design t-shirts based on this and that theme. And then people start designing them, uh, submitting them, others can choose on them, and the best will be printed and everyone will be able to buy them. Their whole business model is based on the community, on the people they bring together and the co-creators they can do with. So you can choose to focus on community or you can choose to focus on emotion. And in fashion, the brand that does that is maybe not the best because there are so many of them, but uh, it's in the, the, the very, very well is Uniqlo. Do you know their wake-up app? You do? I'm, I'm sure you, you used it like a month or so, and then, right? <laughs> you got tired of it, but it was fun. Yeah. You, for, for, for those who haven't used it, it's an app that pings into the weather for you with an alarm or with a watch. Oh, so you, you, get, you get this kind of, the kind of music and a light and, light and a song, and um, so you really get a smile, and you get smiles from around the world of people being woken up by the application. It's fun, right? It has nothing to do with, with selling clothes. But you can choose to position yourself in that, uh, in that way. And you can uh, position yourself with greed such as, or scarcity such as bitterness and, and passion. So pick an emotion to build that up. Okay, I'll leave this aside for a sec. So if you are trying to uh, uh, innovate and if you're in B2B. Because we're realizing more and more that B2B is just about humans also, right? Okay, finally, appearance. So this is where I'll skim, uh, I'll skip through these. All of these things you shouldn't touch. Find out the parts in your industry the, the, about the products that you create that you shouldn't mess with. Yes, you can be creative, but there's so much that you shouldn't touch. This is where designers and, and brands that are design focused skid off the tracks by the dozens because they're being created on the wrong part. You still have to be something or someone who finds their own color and stands out. And I have some examples of our work to show you how we did that. Uh, so we started to work for this thing, it's a Dutch fashion retailer. This was the only brief that we got. Go into the store, see how it feels, talk with our people, and create something similar. So they didn't have any formal brand uh, documentation, so we went through a series of workshops with them. And we created this crazy homepage. It, was, it, it even was one of our first sketches, and we thought, oh, it's nice, we have to change it. But they loved it so much that it actually ended up online. And I would never have designed it to be successful homepage that it was. And uh, funnily, bounce rates were very, very low. Everyone was curious and clicking through. Uh, it was so intense that obviously everyone got bored of it after a year, so we replaced it. But it still worked like crazy. Um, so they wanted this, this shop that was 
had a dark feeling, but it's actually bright because it's an urban myth in e-commerce that bright shops convert better than dark shops. Have you heard that? So they wanted a bright shop that felt dark. So we worked with lighting on clothing, etc., lighting on buttons. Uh, and you can see that a totally different visual identity emerges from that brand than, for instance, if you were working for Super Trash. It's a different feel. It's more feminine. It's lighthearted. Brand core is expressed in the visual identity of the shop or anything that you're working on. So Men at Work is about rawness and about craftsmanship. It should be different. Cool Cat, young and rebellious, also from our work. And they said it wouldn't convert. No, she said it wouldn't convert. And they said, yes, we want it anyway. It should be black because we're black. And it converts like crazy. So. <laughs> There's that myth, right? Busted. Um, and can you go overboard in visual design? Definitely. Um, this is not from our work, actually, but I found it on the net. Can you see how much this set costs? Yeah, 120 euros. It's hardly even, even legible, right? Uh, so, so yes, it's free if it fits the brand, but it doesn't work anymore. But also big brands are going astray. And, and if you ever have visited the Calvin Klein website, it's this weird collection of boxes that you really can't grasp, grasp of where to click or what happens next. So they really missed out on sticking to what you shouldn't change, right? So that's full circle. Um, can I bring you back to the behavior part, just, just briefly? Um, because there is, the, okay, before that, does anyone uh, of you uh, run a website that's B2B or B2C? Only a few, okay. Uh, because in websites, you have this classic dilemma. Um, so maybe you think it's prettier to have three products in a row, but you know that four will convert better. So maybe a designer comes up with this crazy idea of looking at the back of you, but you're really not sure that people really understand, but you think they're kind of cool. Um, or if you know that um, a newsletter subscriptions and website conversion will rise if you uh, put these irritating light boxes on top of the product people, but you really hate them. So what do you do? You do A-B tests. Right, for any of you who do a website, um, I've been for, 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 for many audiences, and almost no one thinks they do enough testing. That's funny. I don't know if this is how this is legal, but we're always discussing what would work best, what to choose, and no one really uh, thinks of themselves as testing enough. So having a lightweight testing uh, uh, setup, organization, technology, anything is very, very valuable for anyone doing B2C communications. Really measure it. OK. Um, and if you're not into fashion uh, commerce, uh, this probably won't help, but it's still nice to know. Um, if you're talking about look looks and trends, et cetera, you know the nice parts about most websites, but you as a designer love this look looks, it would be frustrating that only 20% of people are actually interested one out of five, not more. So most people just want to see the products. You know, what do you want to sell? And that's something that we as marketeers sometimes forget, that it's about the basics for many, many people. Um, and that we're so fond of ourselves and we like our commercials very, very much. But they just want to see what they can buy for their money at the end. However, if they look at that information, they will spend 20% more. That's something good, right? So my challenge is how to raise this percentage. And causality, for those who have statistic interest, uh, we haven't proven yet. So we don't know whether these people are visiting that or whether these people are actually starting to spend more by looking at it. So causality is an issue for us yet. OK, so. If you want to develop your brand online or wherever, and if you want to do it in a meaningful way, 
Then you have to dare to get it in the first place. Right? Really strive to be different and understand your brand, your brand. Go from that, build from that. Build a tone of voice that little, that's a little bit different, a little bit more challenging maybe than some of your, than some of your competitors. <coughs> Try to innovate. Maybe in ways that you didn't feel are in your main path but were still fun for your uh, customers. If you've created fans out of them already, you can delight them a lot more than if you're just a commodity brand. Does that even exist, a commodity brand? Funny to think about it. Okay, so you have to uh, look different. The L is, uh, is off there. Um, inspire, yes, but only a bit. No dilemmas, just put it out there, assess, and then I'm sure you'll be able to survive and thrive. And this is no easy task. And I can't begin to imagine how this would relate to your business, but given the assignments that I've given you, I'm sure you've come up with some ideas to do things a little bit differently or try to be curious about how you can innovate. Questions. It'd be unfair not to be able to ask a few questions at, after such great presentation. Any rate, Anyone? Well, let me talk a little bit about, and if something comes up, the rest of our day. Um, we're going to take a short break. We're roughly on schedule, so maybe we'll extend our break by only about five minutes.